name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Come for all is ready. Seems like such an easy thing to reply to. The answer is yes, by the way. We'll, we'll be there, Lord. Come for all is ready. There's a banquet. Everybody's invited. Y'all come. This is the gospel where Christ says, y'all come. <laughs> but there are so many excuses given, aren't there? I just bought a team of five oxen or five teams of oxen or whatever it says. I need to train them or test them or whatever. I've just taken a wife. I must see to her. And on and on and on and so forth and so forth. But this is the great wedding feast of heaven that everybody's being invited to. He says, come for all is ready. Who doesn't want to come? Don't you know what I'm serving? You wouldn't want to miss this. It's the party of the year. Now this is a parable. Obviously Christ is describing the creation of the cosmos. He's describing the law, and the giving of the law and the prophets. He's describing all being ready because the Son of Man is here. The Son of Man is now. The kingdom of God is at hand. Now all is ready. Come. And still they didn't understand. It's funny how he tells parables so that people will understand. And 90% of the time they don't understand. They're still scratching their heads. What's he talking about? Come because all is ready. We, and I've told you this and mentioned this a number of times, probably recently, probably for forever. But we treat the kingdom of God like it is somewhere else. We talk about it sometimes even like, oh, in eternity later on. When I'm dead in eternity. Or... You know, when, when Christ comes again, and so on and so forth, as if we have time to waste, as if it's not already present. Christ is present. Christ is reigned. The kingdom of God is now. We are citizens of the kingdom. We live in the kingdom. We are subjects of the king who reigns in glory. The kingdom of heaven is now. And listen to him because they come because all has been made ready. Come. The excuses offered in the parable compared to the excuses that we offer almost seem legit. Well, you do have to train your oxen. And my goodness, if you've taken a wife, you do kind of have to see to her and, and, and uh, take her to you. What, what excuses do we offer when we're invited to the feast? Open invitation. We who are baptized into Christ, baptized into the very reality of the eminence of the God-man, the creator, the artificer of the universe. We who have been given the image of Christ, who has taken on the image of man, who has taken on the very essence of mankind. What excuses do we offer? I'm too tired to be there this morning, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm on vacation. I found something that I need to do that takes that time slot out of my week, that, that, that Sunday morning. I'm unable or unwilling to get there. There are times when we are unable. And this is not what we're talking about. That's not an excuse. That's a circumstance. There are times when we are ill. 
or when our work prevents us from being at church, if we have a job that, that uh, doesn't realize that Sundays are for, are for church. And too many of them don't understand that. So we are not held accountable for those times when we must work. Or when we have a sick child, or a sick parent, or when we're traveling somewhere and there isn't a church for any foreseeable distance. We also must keep the Sabbath, but... What excuses do we make? What excuses? And it's not just a Sunday morning thing, don't get me wrong. It's not just saying, hey, come to church because this is the wedding feast of heaven, you should be here. That's true. There you go, I'm wagging my finger once and I'll not, I won't do it again, but yes, you should be here. It has more to do than a Sunday morning situation. The kingdom of heaven is now and it is present. Everything is ready. Come. What excuses are we making? Because the kingdom of heaven, the, 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 the wedding feast is not, it doesn't end with the offering of, of the Holy Eucharist and the divine liturgy on Sunday. The kingdom of heaven is eternal and enduring and everywhere. The holy meal, that, 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 that great uh, wedding feast, is constantly served. It is never ending. Oh, wait. I mean, I don't have to just be good on Sunday. I don't have to just focus on that one time. What happens when we sin? When we sin, we are making an excuse to not be present at the feast. When we choose sin, we're saying, no, I can't come. I won't be there. We've pushed away from the table and let ourselves out. Because, my goodness, we're here. We're at the table, right? We're already at the wedding feast. We're baptized. We're part of it. Push away and walk out the door. Take our leave. Christ says... Those who are invited will not taste of my feast. They'll never taste of my feast. We've been invited. We've accepted the invitation. But in some cases, we're worse than the people he describes because we're already there at the wedding feast. And we turn around and say, never mind, I don't want this. We're rude. You come to the feast and leave. I do it too. The people who make excuses are the people we don't want to be. We have got to find ourselves in every gospel proclamation. Which one is me? Gosh, I don't want to be one of the people that makes an excuse. I want to be one of the people that's rejected and sits out there in the highways and byways. And they go out there in the second wave or the third wave. There's still room at the table. Go get more people. I want to be one of those poor guys. Save me, Lord. I want to be one of the people you pull in. I don't want to be one of the people that makes an excuse. We have to see ourselves in the gospel, though. And when the Lord gives these parables, he's not just speaking to the people at the time. He's speaking to you and I because the pages of scripture are dynamic. And their proclamation in the context of the divine liturgy brings us literally there. We participate in these moments through ritual, through the offering of the liturgy. The proclamation of the gospel means when it's proclaimed during the divine liturgy, we are not just blowing the dust off of these words. We are present through ritual in that very moment when the Lord is proclaiming these things. Now, this is probably... Luke's retelling, I think, of Matthew. And Matthew goes into lots more detail. It talks about the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Luke is a little more brief in his telling of this parable. I rather like Matthew's. Luke is my favorite gospel, uh, bar none. But I rather like Matthew's telling of this. Because Matthew goes into more, 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 a lot of more detail. Throw them out into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. It wasn't just people didn't come. Somebody showed up without a wedding garment. It's, 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 it's probably the same story told a little bit differently by Luke than Matthew. It's kind of talking about the same thing. 
Don't be the one to make an excuse. Don't be the one to come unprepared. We are preparing for a great feast, for the feast of our Lord's Nativity. Through madly purchasing things for as gifts and checking off lists, making lists and checking them twice, if you will, planning meals, planning for holiday parties, planning plenty of things in preparation for the Feast of Our Lord's Nativity. Becoming worried if we've, if we've remembered everybody in a Christmas card list. But are we preparing for the feast? We're offered this period of fasting in preparation for the feast. But it's hard to do that when we're at everybody's holiday party. And we should go to these parties. We're invited. We shouldn't not show up. And if they serve us something that's not in the fast, well, you know, take a bite or something. Don't be rude. Don't be an ungracious guest. How are we preparing for the feast? Are we preparing with quiet contemplation of our response to the, to the invitation? Are we preparing our hearts? Our hearts are a manger. Are they, are they a manger of stone or are they a manger lined with straw that is warm enough and hospitable for the newborn king? Are we preparing to accept the invitation or not? Maybe it's something we have to wake up every morning and ask. How am I preparing for this feast? How am I using the blessedness and the benefit of the fast that is offered to me to anchor myself to the cycle of the church, to the cycle of, of, of worship, to the liturgical <laughs> weekly and monthly and then yearly calendar? How am I using these fasting periods to prepare for the feast? This constant enduring and eternal feast. How am I preparing? It's a good question to ask. It's a good way to assess ourselves every morning and every evening when we wake up and make our prayers before we do anything else. Lord, help me today to be prepared to, to sit at the table. Going to sleep. Lord, I'm sorry that I did a very poor job of being prepared to sit at the table. I ask for your mercy, and I know that it is offered. <clears throat> that I am welcome at the table because of your worthiness, not because of my own. Let us take an abrupt stop in our preparations for how we celebrate Christmas. And it's a good season. It's a good. We get together with friends and family. We give gifts and we remember that Christ was the greatest gift. Let us take a, a break in the middle of that and assess how we're preparing ourselves and our hearts to experience the incarnate Christ, the incarnate newborn King, the, the artificer of the universe. Where will he lay his head? Is our heart a welcoming place? Or is there no room at the end? Make no excuses. We don't want to be the ones that make excuses. We want to be the ones welcome to the table where there's infinite room. There's always more room. No. There's a place that only you can fill at that table. No. And when you're gone from that table, your absence is noticed. Your absence is missed. The Lord hungers to have you there at the table. Make no excuses. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.